Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TCEPs and Fast Films. As you learned in the Simple Index Design previous video, indexing is a very powerful program that works on simple images and also can work on complex images. And so let's run in this routine a index image that has a halftone underbase. As you learned in the previous video, when you're done with index separations, you're pretty much done. You can erase pixels, but you can't apply tone curve. You can't lighten, darken, sharpen. You really are pretty much done. And sometimes you run a design for a dark shirt, and you just would love to boost the underbase in certain areas. Maybe a certain color isn't jumping out like you'd like it. And so we've developed a hybrid routine that gives you a halftone underbase and then indexing for the colors. Now, before you run this, so you should always click on the yellow buttons on any of the routines, and they tell you about the routine. And they give you lots of help in kind of a condensed form and it tells you exactly what's going to happen it tells you what index color is in this case and you should always read these menus this is like a little mini manual built into the program okay, let's run index color halftone base and again indexing gives you lots of help menus make sure and read them don't skip by them you get a little cocky sometimes and you blow by some of these and we get lots of support calls from people who said well I haven't run index for about a month and it isn't turning out and so we go back and walk them through it step by step and we found that they blew by a menu and didn't really understand what it meant or didn't follow the directions make sure and read these menus as with all routines in TCEPs the program prompts you and says you're going to be loading the masked version first version with black around the image and the unmasked or the version with white around it second. Let's load this Guatemala print. This print has lots of colors and it would be a little hard to do with just a two or three color image. Again, we loaded the black version first. We just loaded the white version. The program is cooking. Now again, with indexing, there's more menus and you have to really read these things. And this says that basically you're going to be making a custom color palette. Make sure that diffusion dither is checked, have the amount set to 100%, and have preview unchecked. We're going to press continue. And if your design has lots of spot colors, check preserve exact colors. This design hasn't got a lot of spot colors. It has some, but not a lot. Let's press continue. And it tells you you need to fill the color table with white. We're going to do that right now. Now make sure that you move this window out of the way because the next window will lock this in place and you must see your design. We're going to pick colors from our design. Now the reason the program said to uncheck preview is it will show you your design with the last job you did. Photoshop gets kind of confused and it says, well, you built a color table. You must want me to use it. And this is the last job we indexed and it was not using colors from this design. And so it's confusing. You must uncheck preview. Let's check amount. Let's change amount to 100%. We don't care about preserving exact colors because there really isn't a lot of spot color in this. Depending on if, you, on if you've ever indexed before, the forced window may be solid and it may have other wording in here. It must be set for none. And you must, must, must come down and check on custom. Now, Photoshop brings up the last job you indexed. This is actually the job we did for the basic index design. If you've never indexed before, this entire color palette is full of 256 colors. It's full of colors, and we need to make this palette blank. We need to make it a blank slate. We're going to click and drag from the lower right-hand corner all the way up to the top. Let go of the mouse. That brings up Color Picker, and we're going to drag the mouse off the end to give us dead white. Dead white is 255 levels of RGB. And we're going to say OK twice. Now we have a blank slate, no colors. We're now going to pick colors from our design, and I'm going to make this an eight color print. Now, keep in mind, the program already made an underbase and a highlight. That's two colors. So the best I can do is pick six colors. I could pick seven if it's going to go on a black shirt because I don't print black ink on a black shirt. But you must always pick the black because indexing is like a puzzle. When you start picking colors, it'll make the entire design work with those colors, and it puts pixels next to pixels. Let's click. Move that out of the way. Let's select the black first. Now we could force the black to be solid black. I'm on the color picker now. I could actually force black to be a solid black. Click on the next square. Now here's where it's a judgment call. What greens do I pick? I probably should pick two greens to make this really work well. Let's pick this kind of a uh, 
all kind of a turquoise kind of a green. And you can move your mouse around and see what color you're picking. And let's pick this kind of a lighter green in through here in his body. That's the secret to good indexing on designs like this is to print a lot of colors. That's why sometimes designs like this are 8 and 10 colors and they're indexed. Now, we know we need a brown. We're going to pick a brown from the monument here. This is called Tikal in Belize. Let's try that. This is a judgment call. We know we need the yellow. And let's pick the very obvious yellow, kind of a goldish yellow. That's one, two, three, four, five. Let's pick two more. That will give us seven, and we don't print black ink on a black shirt, which will make it six colors plus the two whites. Now, we know we need some sort of a red. Let's pick the red from the surfer down here. We know that that, that, that uh, we have to try and get a redder red. There we go. That will make the red up here. That will help make the purples. And we know we need, just looking at our design here, we really haven't picked, well, to be best, we probably ought to pick a blue. Let's pick the blue from the sky. Now, Photoshop is going to say, let's take all these colors and let's make this design work with these colors. And we'll say OK. And we'll say OK. And TCEPS now separates the image. And it tells you how to find the nearest Pantone match for the colors. Again, make sure and read these menus when they come up. And it tells you that in this routine, the underbase and highlight is the underbase and highlight are both grayscale. And there's our separations. Now let's look at them first. Let's put it on a black shirt. That's the underbase, pretty good. There's spot color one, spot color two, and the highlight white. We know spot color seven is one is the black. We'll take that off. No, that was the yellow actually looks pretty good. It looks a little darker than I would like. Photoshop displays indexing a little dark sometimes, and you're going to get a little more dot gain on press, but you might want to boost the underbase. Now let's take a look at each channel by itself. There's spot color one. Let's double click on this. And spot color one is the yellow. Don't change the solidity. This may fool some of you. You may think, well, I need to change this. This is the opacity of the ink, and all it is is what the ink will display like and print like on a dark shirt. We've done extensive tests to find the solidity for each color, and it's typically 5% for most of your standard plastisols. Don't change this number. Now, we can actually find what spot color one is in a Pantone equivalent. We can double-click on this. It brings up Color Picker. We can go to Color Libraries, and we can tell Photoshop pretty much find the nearest Pantone match. We say OK, and the program will put the nearest Pantone color right there in the color name. So now we know the Pantone color. Let's see what spot color 2 is. That's one of the greens. Now sometimes Photoshop doesn't do well here. It doesn't like reds that well. It's doing really well so far. Pretty good. And we do this for all the colors. Of course, you can see the downside to indexing is this is not going to be off-the-shelf colors. You're going to end up mixing these colors. And of course, if the design is cartoony and there's nothing to really match, you can come close. Photoshop will find more of an oranges for the reds. It's odd that the Pantone colors don't do too well with the reds. I'm going to go with that. Obviously, that's the black. It hates that. We'll leave that alone. And then there's the highlight white and the underbase. Now, let's look at it again on a black shirt. Keeping in mind that we don't print black ink on a black shirt. And we now have grayscale for the underbase and highlight. I could click on the underbase channel, go to Image Adjustments Curves, and this brings up the tone curve. And I can now boost the underbase and give me more base. If this was a normal index job where every channel was indexed, I couldn't do this. So I can boost the underbase. Now also, Photoshop displays indexing a little grainy. 
it doesn't do a very good job of displaying it. Don't let don't worry about that. It'll print very nice. If we zoom in, we can see it's a puzzle. So every one of the separations is little tiny square dots. These print dots next to dots, so you get no moray on your screens. The prints print beautifully. The dot gain helps to kind of smooth things out. So the downside to indexing is you have to really do a lot of colors if you really wanted to print correctly. Now we could have picked one green, one blue, one yellow, one red, one black, and for this design it probably would have come pretty close. Now you're going to put these on your typical 230 mesh for underbases, 305 mesh for top colors. Let me just zoom in so you can see that these are little tiny squares. And that is how we index designs in TSEPs.